You often are told that in order to stay healthy, you have to drink loads and loads of water even if you don't feel thirsty because supposedly by the time you feel thirst that already is too late and your body already is dehydrated and dehydration is a bad state for your body to be in which can make you very ill. So you're supposed to gulp down all this water even if you don't feel thirst to stay healthy. And today we are going to find out how much truth really is behind this advice. And in my research on this subject, I found that um, the most likely source for all the advice about all this water drinking you're supposed to do in general is one piece of advice called the 8x8 rule, which states that for 8 times per day, you should have a glass of water, each coming with 8 ounces. And because this one rule is... Um, the source, uh, the general advice about all the water drinking um, you get mutated from, I tried to find out where the 8 times 8 rule actually came from. And I had help here from a scientist who tried to do the very same thing. And he found a very likely source for the 8 times 8 rule in a 1974 book on nutrition written by a Dr. Stair, who also later was called the forefather of all the water drinking we have to do. So what did Dr. Stair write that caused the invention of the 8x8 rule? And Dr. Stair wrote the following. How much water each day? This is usually well regulated by various physiological mechanisms, but for the average adult, somewhere around 6 to 8 glasses per day, this can be in the form of coffee, tea, milk, soft drinks, beer, etc. Fruits and vegetables are also good sources of water. Now, when we look at what Dr. Steyr wrote here, we have to note a couple of things. First of all, he was talking about the water we need in total, not on top of what we already have. He meant the total we have to have per day to stay healthy. Second, he also mentioned that the physiological mechanisms inside our bodies that regulate the liquids in it are very well working. Meaning, he, he says that the thirst tells you at the right time when you should have to drink something. And third, he also said that water can come from all possible kinds of sources, fruit, vegetables, coffee, meat and all that. And it doesn't have to be water specifically that you have to drink. So if Dr. Stair, and it is very likely that that is the case, if Dr. Stair really is the source for all the water drinking we are supposed to do, then uh, somewhere along the road Dr. Stair most likely simply was misunderstood and um, what he said mutated into something completely different. And one person heard that and then the next person heard that. And it was repeated so often that it simply became a truth that all people thought they have to follow. Now that we saw that all this water drinking may simply be due to a misunderstanding, let us also mention some of the most common myths we hear in connection with all the water drinking we are supposed to do. And one you hear very often is the one we already talked about, which is uh, that supposedly thirst sets in too late to prevent dehydration. In scientific experiments it was shown that thirst always came at the right time before dehydration set in and when you think about it it also wouldn't have made sense for evolution to design us in a way that constantly would leave us dehydrated if we don't force ourselves to drink water. Next you often hear that the color of your urine can indicate an illness and for you to be healthy your urine should be clear, which is totally wrong. Let's say for example um, you have internal bleedings and some of that blood goes inside your urine. Now when you drink a lot of water 
the blood will simply dissolve in all this water and your urine will still be clear but that doesn't mean that the internal bleedings have stopped it just means that the blood is now so thin in your urine that it can't be seen so you can't per se say that clear urine means you are healthy The last one you often hear in connection with all this water drinking you're supposed to do is that if you don't do it, supposedly toxins will accumulate inside your body and make you ill. But already as Dr. Stair said almost 40 years ago, all these mechanisms that regulate the water inside your body and take care of waste products work very well and you don't have to consume more water on top to get rid of toxins and waste products and whatever from your body. To the contrary, if you consume a lot of water, that simply means more stress for your kidneys because they have to filter it and produce the urine to get rid of excess water and all this stress can simply make them ill. Last but not least, the one we also have to mention is the one about caffeine supposedly having a dehydrating effect on you because that one really has a basis in scientific research done in good years which showed that exact fact. But later research showed that this effect only sets in uh, for people who aren't used to caffeine. So if you habitually drink coffee or coke or whatever else you're used to the effect of caffeine the caffeine won't have this dehydrating effect and you can um, count the liquids you get from these caffeinated drinks fully into the total liquids you consume per day. So what should you take away from this video? If you are a normal healthy person then you can rely on your thirst to tell you when and how much you should be drinking and there is no scientific research showing that your thirst sets in too late or doesn't tell you to drink enough. This whole notion about um, you have to drink x amount on top of what you feel like drinking may simply be due to a misunderstanding and the negative side effects that not doing this supposedly has have no scientific research to back them up. And this concludes this video. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye bye.